What created this stunning geological oddity in Australia? This is the story of the Organ Pipes, a columnar basalt formation in Victoria, Australia. Through millions of years these rock formations were exposed to the world, but how did they form in the first place? The answer lies in fiery volcanic eruptions, but it doesn't stop there. The size and length of these pipes indicates a story of voluminous lava flows, and we'll be looking on magnetics to see where these lava flows came from and what volcanoes released them. The story of the organ pipes begins at a time when the land looked very different than it does today. An ancient waterway flowed through this region. Its origin was likely hundreds of millions of years old, where it flowed unimpeded throughout time. That all changed 7 million years ago, when Victoria became the site of tremendous volcanic activity. The cause of this volcanic activity lies in a magmatic hotspot that Australia has slowly been moving north over for the past 33 million years. Beginning in Queensland, these volcanic eruptions occurred further and further south as Australia moved north. Volcanism occurred in New South Wales, and then, 7 million years ago, its fiery reach gripped Victoria. So are these volcanoes extinct or dormant? The answer to that question is a constant debate amongst geologists. In reality, they are likely to be dormant rather than extinct, as the last volcanic eruption linked to the hotspot occurred within the past 5,000 years. But back to the ancient river. Geologists believe it was choked out of existence within the past million years, which is a stone's throw away in geological terms. Hundreds of volcanoes roared to life during this time, and the ancient river became enveloped by fast flowing lava. It must have been a sight of terror for the animals alive back then. Lava pouring into waterways that they drank from causing explosions as the water contacted the lava. So much lava was released it's believed to have buried the river in up to 70 metres worth of basalt. This picture of a signpost in the organ pipe speaks to its geological origin, but it's clear that the geologists at the time did not have access to the magnetic maps that we have today, as they mention Mount Holden as being one of the volcanoes that formed the organ pipes. This is incorrect. I made a video on Mount Holden and a link to that will be in the description. This is the distance between the organ pipes and Mount Holden. When we look at magnetics, we can see that there were volcanoes far closer to the organ pipes that released flowing basalt. The flows can be seen on the magnetic images as basalt is an iron rich rock, and thus the magnetics give a great indication of the volcanic vent locations and the direction of the flows. As a side note, if you're enjoying this video, please click the like button to help YouTube recommend it to others. Consider subscribing and clicking the bell icon to be notified of when we upload. We also have a Patreon if you'd like to support the channel, only if you have the means of course, and you can find that both in the description and in a pinned comment down below. So how were the organ pipes formed? Well, their formation is due to a major volcanic event that released copious amounts of lava. So much lava was released that it accumulated en masse. This accumulation led to the slow cooling of the lava that was at the lower levels of the flow. As the top levels rapidly cooled, the lava trapped beneath was forced to cool at a much slower rate, leading to the formation of columnar basalt. So if it isn't already clear, columnar basalt is formed through the cooling and contraction of basaltic lava. As the lava cools, it begins to solidify and contract. This cooling process starts at the surface and gradually moves inward. The pattern of cracking typically results in hexagonal shapes, although other polygonal shapes can also occur. The hexagonal columns form because this shape allows for the most efficient packing of the cracks. The columns are generally vertical, orientated perpendicular to the cooling surface. The size of the columns can vary depending on the rate of cooling. Slower cooling tends to produce larger columns, while faster cooling rates produce smaller columns. So it becomes clear that the amount of lava released during one single eruption was so voluminous that it created a very slow cooling of the lava trap beneath the surface. When the lava flows choked out the ancient waterways, new creeks and rivers had to be constructed. At first this would have been a slow process, as water from rains would have dammed up at first, only to slowly carve its way into the basaltic rock at any low points that were present. Eventually this gave birth to the waterway here, known as Jackson's Creek. Over time, Jackson's Creek carved through the basalts and revealed the spectacular geological formation that we now call the organ pipes. There are several areas where the original ground that was laid down during the Upper Ordovician to Rudanian period outcrops. This was a time that spans from approximately 458.4 million years ago to 443.4 million years ago, back when Victoria was a deep sea. 
Siltstone and sandstone were eroded from the west and carried out into the once deep ocean prior to this region's uplift above the salty waters. And these rocks lay underneath the basalt in certain areas, whilst in others they outcrop alongside the basalt, in areas that weren't covered by immense lava flows as Jackson's Creek slowly meandered its way through this newly shaped land. The Rosette Rock is a fascinating geological formation in the Organ Pipes National Park in Victoria, Australia. It is a large outcrop of basalt with a radial array of columns, resembling a rose or spokes of a giant wheel. To understand the Rosette Rock, we need to travel back millions of years. This region was shaped by intense volcanic activity, with lava flows creating the basalt landscape we see today. During these ancient times, molten lava surged across the land, cooling and solidifying into the hard, dark rock known as basalt. Basalt is an igneous rock formed from the rapid cooling of basaltic lava exposed at or very near the surface of the planet. The Rosette Rock may have been created by lava cooling in a spherical cave formed by an earlier flow. Imagine a massive river of lava flowing and then cooling, but within this flow there are pockets where the lava cools more slowly, forming spherical caves. As the lava inside these caves began to cool and contract, it cracked in a very distinct pattern, creating the radial columns that now resemble a rose or the spokes of a giant wheel. This unusual rock formation most likely cooled outwards. It's hypothesized that stone or some other irregular feature acted as a cooling surface, influencing the pattern of the columns. As the outer edges cooled faster than the interior, the rock began to crack and form the distinctive columns we see today. This process is similar to what occurs when mud dries and cracks, but on a much grander scale and over a much longer period. Over millions of years, the relentless flow of Jackson's Creek carved a valley into the land, gradually eroding the surrounding rock. Jackson's Creek, with its persistent flow, has played a significant role in shaping the landscape of Organ Pipes National Park. This natural erosion eventually exposed the Rosette Rock, revealing its stunning structure for us to admire today. The creek's waters have slowly but steadily worn away the softer rock surrounding the heart of basalt, allowing the Rosette Rock to emerge as a prominent feature in the park. A short walk away from the Rosette Rock reveals another geological phenomenon, the tessellated pavement. A basalt outcrop where the ground beneath your feet tells a story millions of years in the making. The term tessellated means geometrically checkered, and this pavement certainly lives up to its name. Unlike the vertical faces of the iconic organ pipes, here you gaze upon the tops of columnar basalt formations. The pavement's surface is smooth, polished over countless years by the steady flow of Jackson's Creek, which has gently filed down the basaltic columns, revealing a patchwork of geometric shapes. When basaltic lava cooled and contracted, it cracked into these columns, most of which are hexagonal. However, the columns here are varied, with some having four, five, seven, or even eight sides, creating a unique and mesmerizing pattern. Walking on this pavement feels like traversing a colossal ancient tile floor, each step a reminder of the Earth's fiery past. To the left, the land rises, revealing a stark contrast to the dark basalt, light-colored sedimentary rock, this rock tells a different chapter of the Earth's story, one written under the sea. These sedimentary layers were formed by the accumulation of rock fragments, sand, clay and mud deposited over millions of years. Compressed under the weight of water, these layers turn to stone, capturing within them glimpses of ancient marine life. Fossils of sea worms and extinct floating animals called graptolites are preserved in this rock, evidence that it was laid down around 400 million years ago. Over eons, subterranean forces caused gradual upheavals and sinkings of the land, shaping the terrain into what we see today. So the next time you visit Organ Pipes National Park, take a moment to appreciate the Rosette Rock and tessellated pavement, and the incredible stories they represent. From molten lava to a breathtaking natural sculpture, it's a story written in stone. The beauty of this formation lies not just in its appearance, but in the story of its creation. A story of fire, stone, water and time. Thanks for watching. Are you interested in animals? I've just started a second channel called Paleozoology that discusses extinct and extant animals with a current focus on the megafauna that once dominated and roamed Australia. I've released a video on the marsupial lion which existed in Australia during the time Indigenous Australians walked the continent. I've also covered the wombat that was the size of a car, known as the Diprotodon or the largest terrestrial lizard known as the Megalania. I'd love to have you along for the journey as more videos are released.
You can find the link to this channel and to the aforementioned videos in the description and in the pinned comment in the comment section. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.